All right, cool. Awesome sauce. Well, would you like to introduce yourselves now? Yes. Uh, so I'm a Nemos. Um, I'm a producer and an artist, and I like sound designing. And yeah, that's the gist. Round of applause. Um, I'm Bio, and you, you should know me already. Whoa. <laughs> if you don't... That's um, crazy. Get out. Oh! Okay, I agree. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, please. I agree. If you please. don't know Bio, please leave my fucking... My house. My goop house. Get out of here. Yeah, if you don't know Bio, Bio is the best moderator, but don't tell the other mods I said that. <laughs> That's not true. I don't do anything. Uh, Everyone always beats me to the punch. Um. Wait, can I show you guys his faces? I'm going camera mode. Okay, let me... I cannot speak for any of us. Uh, what? Go camera mode. I don't know. Oh, crazy outlook right now. Wait. Do, do, do. Why? I'm like... You would think that after years and years and years now of streaming, that I'd be like a little better at streaming. <laughs> <laughs> you would think... But... Everyone say hi, Bio. Wow. Hi. Um. Whoa. Hi. hi. Hello. Um. Wow. Well, before we get started with the sign design, sound design workshop, um, guys, it's Goop Week. Do you know what that means? That means we have a charity thing going on. We're donating to the Palestinian. Uh, Children's Relief Fund. Uh, they're a vetted organization. We've donated to them many, many times in the past. Um, they do amazing work in the West Bank and in Gaza proper. Um, so please, please consider donating. You can hit exclamation point donate. We have a goal of 5,000, which we've easily crushed in the past, and I definitely believe we're going to do it again. So, yes. Exclamation point donate to donate. And without further ado, do you guys want to get started? Sure. Yeah. I might just I'll stream my it. Ableton. Yeah, open that shit up. Probably Let's important. Get into it. So chat. Um, Shreen here and I are, are we're here to ask questions on your behalf. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yes. if you have a question, throw it in chat and we'll try and keep an eye on it. <clears throat> yeah, I only have one monitor, so I can't see them. Uh whoever pinned shit house, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Mods <laughs> kill this guy. <laughs> My bad, my bad. <laughs> what are we learning today, uh, yeah. teacher? We're learning how to make music, obviously. We're yes, learning about sound. sound design and yeah. making cool noise and having fun, too. That's pretty important. Are we going to have fun? Audio is going to work, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me check my drivers. That should work. Let me just play a sound. Yeah, sure. Pop, pop, pop the stream up. Make sure that chat can hear. Wait, I can't. Hang on. Sorry. Mmm, the keyboard noises. Wow. Holy. Oh, lots of different noises, I see. Whoa. Yes. I was going to use this as, like, uh, kind of example stuff to work with. I like yeah. it. Chat, can you hear? Um, Make some more sounds, please. Yeah. Whoa, that's such a good sound. Mm, that's really good. Very nice. Oh, wait, so, wait, can they hear it? Yes. Oh, okay. They can hear it. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, Thank so, you, I guess I'll start off um, just kind of, like, showing some techniques I use, um, and I'll start off with, like, swarm processing. So, essentially, swarm processing is, like, taking a bunch of one effect and then repeating that a bunch of times and then, like, messing with all the parameters at once so you can... Um, Okay. Basically, like, make, like, every, uh, what's it called? Like, every uh, part of the effect will become amplified because you're repeating it a bunch of times. And uh, okay. it's a good way to, like, very quickly kind of make a regular sound sound, like, you know, crazy and wild. And you can, you know, work from there. But what's an effect you like to use a lot? 
to do that. Um, so I have this one with grain delay, which I think sounds pretty neat. Mm. Um, just because, like, you know, there's a delay there, so there's, there's like, um, you know, you can work with feedback um, synthesis. So, like, you know, when things feedback on each other, it kind of creates a weird sound. And also mm. you can pitch it around, um, which also has a cool effect. Um, so basically how I made this rack um, was... Actually, I'll just make one from scratch. So if you're, like, using Ableton, um, you can do... You can, like, follow along. Or if uh, you're using FL, I'm sure there's a way in Patcher you could do this. Mm. But uh, I don't really know that much about Patcher besides, like, messing around a little bit. So, um, but... Yeah, you, you definitely could emulate this in Patcher. Anyways, so you get an effect. And you can do this on any effect, not just grain delay. Um, and then, uh, oops. So basically, you just map all of the macros you want to mess with. Um, like, just to the macros. OK, so what what you're doing a grain delay right now. What uh, parameters are you mapping? So I'm. Uh, Mapping the spray, the frequency, the pitch, okay. the random randomized pitch, feedback, and then I'm also going to do um, the delay times. Okay. Um, but I'll map those to the same one, so then when we switch modes, we uh, we don't have to. What's it called? Um, like we're saving space basically in this okay. uh, little effect rack, and then also mapping this so we can switch between beats mode. Like uh, the beat divisions, and then uh, mm -hmm. the the time, like in the milliseconds continues. or seconds yeah. or whatever, and then uh, dry wet, and then once you have that, uh, you can basically just duplicate it. I usually do eight times because I don't know. I, I think I think like any more or any less is like, I mean, you could definitely have less, but I think any more is like a lot of or more CPU power, and also like just kind of gets too crazy. Yeah, and I like to mess with things afterwards. Returns. Yeah, and then also put a limiter. <laughs> Yeah, no joke. on your track. <laughs> That's pretty important cuz uh usually when you're like messing with a lot of effects at once like this, like things can get really loud. So I'll just set that to negative 1. Sure. Um but yeah, so now once you have all these um when you duplicate it, it'll copy the um the mapping. Yeah, the mappings over. Okay. So then you don't need to repeat oh. them all. That's why you just start with one. Yeah, damn, yeah. there's not a way to do that conveniently in FL Studio. <laughs> that, would, that would be yeah. fucking nice. The times I've used Patcher, it's like, you have to, like, if you put a plugin in, you can't just, like, copy it, right? Like, you have to... Nah, you gotta, like, go yeah. to the plugin picker. I mean, technically, you can grab it from your effects rack using the save preset as thing, and then drop it into the mm -hmm. Patcher, and that is, like, the fastest way to get a bunch of copies of something, but then you yeah. have to go in and turn on the node for the specific control you want to modulate oh, yeah. and then connect the wires for every single instance. It's kind of yeah. whack. So that, that might be a little more tedious, but once you have it set up, it'll, uh, like, you can just save it and use it whenever. So oh, that's awesome. That's the, that's a good thing. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, so once we have this set up, um, I'm going to turn the dry wet to zero mm. and, uh, then we can get started with messing. So first I'll play like, this is just a lot of Foley I recorded with a, uh, I have a Zoom H4n, just like the regular one, not the Pro. Um, but I just recorded a bunch of sounds like in my room. So like, I have like a faucet, you know. Um, yeah. This is denoised as well. And then I oh, uh, okay, just like, gotcha. you know, bag crinkling over here. That's what you first heard. All right, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to take this bag crinkling sound just because I think it, it's a good, like, kind of a, you know, starting place for how our sound. How would you, yeah, how, what, how do you pick sounds to do something like this to? Is there any quality you're looking for? Um, I think a lot, like with a lot of my sound design, at least from this, so where I'm starting from, you know, like a, a sample or something mm -hmm. that I've recorded, like, uh, you know, with my field recorder or, you know, uh, not like not trying to synthesize something from scratch. You know, I try to get something with a lot of like, uh, you know, frequencies in it. So like, you know, maybe it already starts off with a nice texture. Like this one is like pretty pleasing. And I think, you know, you could work from there. Like you could do a lot with this, um, this like starting place, you know, cause there's a lot of, uh, 
yeah. stereo with as well because like i was mm. you know moving the bag around the microphone to kind of like give it that like more asmr feel so like it's more in the left ear and then kind of moves over to the right that kind of thing so i think that's like um kind of why i'm choosing this right now but just in general like when i choose samples i try to choose stuff that like you know kind of inspires me like or it gives me ideas i guess that's kind of hard to quantify but um i don't know if something seems like it'd be fun to mess around with like you should just go for it because why not but yeah i i basically like am guided by what would be most interesting to me okay. a lot of times in sound design especially like this where it's just like uh you know i'm making a sound for fun or like kind of exp like exploratory sound design versus you know actually working oh, yeah. with in like a song or a beat or something i mean swarms oh. seem very exploratory in general because it's like i would never if you were being very straightforward about this you wouldn't do eight grain delays like you would just yeah yeah make exactly. the sound in a normal way but this is yeah. not what this is about this yeah is this not... is just about like seeing what comes out of like a lot of modulation and stuff that's like all of sound design though you kind of do just gotta fuck around and do silly things because you're gonna find yeah. some weird corner that other people haven't explored yet exactly that's, that's very so important cool. okay can we hear it <laughs> so i'm yeah. like on the so edge of my here <laughs> so basically with the the dry wet knob it's messing it with it for all of them so like if you have it on max it's not really gonna like well also like there's nothing happening so it's not gonna really do that much yeah. So I'll keep one open so I can see what mode I'm on. Am I on time? I can't tell with this new update. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so it's, there's no dry signal at all, which is like, especially if you're like messing with the pitch knob, like making it go down, it's going to yeah. be quiet because there's not like, well, so I'm cutting out all the lows, but there's really not much, um, like, you want to kind of have the dry wet like somewhere around here. It'll, you, need uh, the original, like, you need the original sound yeah. because if you're just delaying yeah. things over and over, they're going to get pushed to extremes and they're going to disappear. Yeah, it needs to like pass through yeah. at, like at least a little bit. So no, It's just like vocoding, like at you. But yeah, so That's you kind of hear that effect now. And when you mess with this, like it's kind of giving it more and less. Um, but I'm just going to like turn up the feedback a bit. And then I'm just going to like kind of play around with it and see what I can get out of it. That's awesome. And the spray just kind of like made it disappear. Yeah, it got Let's really quiet and foggy. I'm also going to put a glue compressor on it. I was just going to say, this is, this is where I put a compressor on the end. <laughs> it's probably a little too quiet, but it will get louder. So I'm just going to like put it right there. Oh, this sounds like rain. That's crazy. Yeah, just kind of like playing around and seeing like what I find. Maybe move this up so there's like more frequencies kind of moving around. It's a little mm -hmm. louder and, you know, you get more like frequency to work with. And I'm going to turn that up. It's kind of like squelchy now. It might be kind of fun to mess with. You can work with that. So I'm going to get an EQ as well. Just kind of see what's going on. Yeah. And when I use EQ mm -hmm. a lot, like, um, like, you know, if you're mixing a song, you know, you don't usually have to go crazy with the EQ or, you know, it'll sound like very yeah. kind of like, I don't know. I feel like mixes can get really lifeless when you oh, yeah. like go too hard with the EQ. Um, but like if you're sound designer, you can go just feel free to go crazy. You oh, know, yeah, cause, I mean, it's just a big pile of filters. Yeah, exactly. You can do crazy shit with it. Yeah. So I'm just going to boost the, like, give that more body like the low mids and then Interesting. let's keep playing around with this
<laughs> Maybe OTT. Yeah, um, that's kind of like the gist of this, you know, and uh, like, usually once I find something I like, you know, I'll basically take that and, uh, you know, this would probably just be like a texture sound that I could use, you know, as like some kind of filler in a beat or something like that. Um, but it kind of yeah. just like, can you go different places with it? Yeah. But yeah. Um, and then I guess I'll just like put another one on top because like I don't know. Let's see. Um, actually, wait. I had a rack. I had a regular Echo one. I don't know where it is though. It might be in here somewhere. Actually, I don't know if I saved it. I'll make a new one. Um, but yeah, the, this one is like very fun to mess around with. Uh, and you honestly like. This is more like feedback synthesis, so yeah. or what I'm about to do with the echo one. So like kind of just like messing around with the feedback of this echo. Like I can create a lot of new sounds from that and then use those. And I'll kind of like move from the swarm processing after this into like how to use mud pies to make drums and like other sounds. Yeah, like this that. is this is where it's gonna go. Is your doing fairy mud pie sort of thing, which is kind of what my, I do a lot as well. And I, mm -hmm. I would be interested to know how you take something like that and write a piece of music. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, you know what? I'll just do just the time. That's better. Let's do that. Um... So I'm turning up this uh, modulation, and then I'm going to, like, basically have this attached to this, or uh, this knob, so I can turn okay. it on and off. That might have a cool effect later on. And then also the modulation rate for uh, the echo might be some uh, kind of cool as well. Um, and then I'll just turn this on ping pong. And then see if I want any of this other stuff. Yeah, I'll turn on wobble. All right, um, so now we have this all set up, and I can just, oh wait, maybe I'll add one more thing. I have one more slot. Uh... Hmm. Oh, envelope follower, that may be kind of neat. Okay, um, so now I'm just going to duplicate this, and this one is definitely going to be loud. Okay. So, yeah, let me just turn this off. Um, can I just say, Mr. Gronk, one, three, two, four, three, two, just asked, what do you use? <laughs> Thank you, first time chatter, Mr. Gronk, one, three, two, four, three, two. Wait, what do I use? What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that's all? Just what do I use? What do you use? Uh, like, I don't know, my brain, I think, my, and my, uh, my heart. I like it, I like it. <laughs> you gotta use both, you gotta. That's so true. Okay, that's already weird. <laughs> this was a lot more fun to mess with, if you, like, want to kind of get, like, get really out there sounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And usually what I'll do is like loop this and I'm gonna I'm gonna mute that for a second. Um just start resampling and then we can take what we record and make it into new stuff. 
yeah so so let me get rid of that uh um, mr gronk uh one three two four three two is clarified what do you use for music um and i'm oh. no expert <laughs> but i'm gonna say this is ableton it looks yes, like it. it sure does yes very true this is ableton, ableton live. you yes. know i do have to interject with something here yeah, um, go for it. I'm absolutely astounded at how, uh, even when you know what you're doing with sound design, it seems so similar to me hopping into my free-to-use software and spinning the oh, yeah. knobs randomly until I get something I like, which I feel oh, yeah. like makes it a really good entry point for getting into music if you don't know oh, anything absolutely. about making music. Hey, that's what I did. <laughs> I mean, I think every like producer basically like kind of just does that and you know like i've always thought of it as you know i have a toolbox in my head and like i know how to do certain things because i like have done them before mm -hmm. and then i can add that to my toolbox and then you know in the future you know you, you kind of just like or as you start and like start learning more things you can build up that toolbox and that's basically like how you improve and get better but it really is just like all about experimentation and like mm -hmm. trying out new things and you know kind of seeing what like oh this sounds cool or this is fun like let me try to mess with this and see what happens you know but kind of building up that toolbox is like kind of been my like mantra as i've like tried to improve and get better yes but yeah that's awesome yes i'm gonna click record and start resampling stuff let's go see what happens so, yeah, just mess with knobs. Genuinely. It's a lot of going out on a limb and just seeing what happens at the end. I'm going to turn this down, too. Yeah, that's quite loud. that will probably make it better. More listenable for people. Mr. Gronk, Kinda one, three... Two, four, three, two, ask. Uh, but like, how do I sign sign up? It looks so confusing. Like, how does a microwave work? Like, what am I supposed to do? Mr. Ronk, I will give you some advice <laughs> because I don't make music. Um, mm -hmm. But very often I pop onto chat or I hop onto the stream and I attempt wholeheartedly and genuinely with all the love in my heart to make music and sincerely there's very little that you can just like go into a textbook and learn how to make music you know um i also self-taught myself art and literally all you have to do is just like get into any program and just start doing things at random like don't put so much pressure on yourself to like understand things so fundamentally like you don't need to know all the inner workings of a microwave to heat up a damn burrito you know what i mean so, so true. you can do it you can do it it looks really overwhelming but just start at one corner and just work your way forward <laughs> mr conk have you heard of are you <laughs> that's the sauce that's my Actually. go for legal reasons i don't know what that is <laughs> Yeah, what? I never. <laughs> what even is that? Is that like a, like a product or something? I don't know. Yeah, it sounds. Um, it sounds like a rapper. I think it's a rapper. They make music. Yeah, probably. <laughs> this is so nice. I might switch uh, to like a different section because I kind of want to get stuff that's more percussive for, you know. I was gonna say you know. I, I would be really interested to see how the drum sounds. Uh, come out of this. <laughs> Actually, this is a, I think a good spot. Whoa. 
the talker. It's like the adults from Charlie Brown, sort of. <laughs> True. <laughs> I guess it's down. I like it. It's awesome. Uh, Mr. Gronk1324 says, I still like cheese. I ate 50 pounds today by myself. 50? <laughs> that doesn't. I think you need to get your numbers up. That doesn't sound like enough. Now, just get some more variety. So I'm gonna do this as well. Okay. And turn this back on. Yeah, let me just take that and move it over here. This is very quiet, I think. Let's do... Well... Yeah, I'll try it after. Okay. Turn it back up. Let's move back to a different section, like more percussive elements. I'm going to actually wait. I'll just put it on this track so I can hear. OK. Let's see. Um. Oh, this will be good. Oh, that's really nice. I'm excited to hear that. Sometimes good sound design makes me feel like... So you know how you have like no like pain receptors in your brain? Like if I was to poke around in there, like you wouldn't like be like, ouch. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. I guess that makes sense, but that's crazy. Well, it's weird because you do have them for some organs, but just not for your brain because you don't expect... Anything gonna happen up there? And if it does, yeah. like, I guess feeling You're pretty far not super helpful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably already dead. KBL has donated ten dollars. Thank you so much. All funds going what to the, the PCRF. Heck? Let's go. I Thank appreciate you. it. That's my bestie. Um, yeah. Sometimes good sound design does feel like um, cleaning out my brain with a Q-tip in the most like literal sense. Let's mm. go. Because you that would is. start like hearing like stuff and seeing stuff. True. That's so true. Brain cleanse. Turn that down a little bit. Maybe you can actually turn it way down. Get some more clickies. Us with the feedback. I just realized it wasn't recording. Oops. Oops. This is so pop rocks in the mouth. You're so True. right, Bryson. Oh, it popped there. Oh, yeah, it's a clipping. 
I don't know what's happening there, but it's pretty neat. <laughs> it's way loud. Oh, let's mm -hmm. turn that down. Yeah, and like, honestly, it might take a while, like, if you mess it around to like, kind of get what you're looking for. So, you know, just experimenting and stuff is like the best method. You know, what I will do now is LFO things. So this is another method that like you can use with this kind of stuff um, and kind of like automate things for you. And, you know, then you don't have to like actually go and mess with the knobs yourself. Um, but basically in Ableton, how you do it is you just set this uh, waveform to random and then you take this you duplicate it and map that to the rate mm -hmm. and then you map this one to that or and then um, you can like duplicate that a bunch of times over so I'm actually going to undo that one real quick and make like three or four of these and then I can start modulating uh just like, you know, um, all the different parameters and then it'll do it for me and it's way easier. Uh -huh. Easy peasy. I feel kind of has something like this. You got the peak, peak controller has a random oscillator mode. Oh, uh, yeah. Way harder to work with. <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of a pain in the ass. <laughs> That's how, like, a lot of people do uh, the, like, patcher stuff, I think. Yep. With the yeah. controller, at least that's how I've done it in the past. Like a couple of times, I messed with it. Uh, the one thing I will say I do really like about um, FL Studio is that you can, for any parameter mapping that you do, you can define a function for how the input maps to the knob. Which yeah, is that's neat. sick. I like doing that a lot, putting like inverse squares in there and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You can go like very far with that, that kind of stuff. Oxidrios asks, how do you apply the limiter again? Oh, uh, yeah, so you just, in audio effects up here, you can also search for it. Um, just taking the limiter, you can use any limiter, this is just the stock limiter in Ableton, and then putting it at the end of your rack. So then if something's really loud, you know, you don't like blow your eardrums out. Um, yep. Yeah. So it'll catch it for you, so you don't have to like quickly turn it off. Um, but yeah, so that's how you do that. Anyways, um, let's do that. It says sometimes sound design is like when you rub your eyes, rub your closed eyelids and see pretty shapes and colors. Which is so it's real. real. It's a, uh, I think finding like analogs like that is a good way to like, you know, find inspiration for, you know, whatever you're working on. I think that's like a fun way to think of things. You know, see, like, how can I apply this concept to, uh, like, a music purpose or, like, in my dog? You know, yeah. see what see what comes out of that. All right, so now it's, like, sort of going. And I can mess with it a bit more. And it's very quiet, and then it gets very loud, so... Kind of just have to be careful. <laughs> God, Maximus and, and FL is so good for dealing with things like this, because I will just draw a compressor shape that makes all the quiet stuff really loud, and then anything above a certain threshold is silent. Mm. It's one of the nicest things. It's so convenient. Especially if you want to isolate like the tail of a really weird sound. Because I feel like there's a lot of yeah. times there's interesting stuff right on the tail. Okay. I I think it's just making a lot of low end noise. So I'm going to figure that out real quick. Okay. Before. Because I think it's literally just clipping everything out of existence. <laughs> yeah. And that's That'll why there's no noise.
Yeah, that cannot be understated how important it is to be patient, especially when you're working with like Mud Pie style sound design. Sometimes it takes a lot of tweaking to get something that's actually interesting. Yeah. Now I'm getting a very real look. Okay. Oh, that's wow. nice. Ooh. Wait, I'm not even safely. Oh. Yeah, I do that a lot. <laughs> it's a classic. I'm just gonna fix this real quick. So that should be this one. Okay, I just wanna add another real quick. And then I wanna map that to the frequency. There we go. Okay. We're starting to like get somewhere now. Yeah, so once you get it going, like, you know, you'll just start getting cool sounds back to back to back. Oh, that's so real. Anytime I make a good bug generator. Oh, fuck! Interrupted. <laughs> God, that's fucking loud. Oops. Yeah, right. I let that shit run for like 20 minutes and then I come back and listen to the recording. Yeah. <laughs> that's so fun. Yeah, we'll have pretty good source material to work with um, in like a couple more minutes and then uh, we can start resampling from there. Cool. But yeah, this is like where I start a lot of times and like if I ever want to do sound design in, you know, a beat or something, um, a lot of times I'll have, so I like when I make drum kits and stuff, this is kind of my main method of making sounds unless I'm just like, you know, taking actual Foley. Um, but I'll have like a bunch of these like in here, you know, I have a bunch of these and I just kind of work with these and like mm -hmm. as I'm making songs and stuff, you know, I'll use these sounds or like I'll use these kind of like, they're called mud, I mean, I call them mud pies. Maybe it's not like the traditional mud pie that most people think of, but, um, but I'll use these to make like drums or melody, melodic stuff and things like that, you know? Yeah. And then I can like, you know, save those sounds. So That's we actually... Kinda, so oh, chat has asked, um, would you use any of these sounds for melodic stuff? And if you if you were to, how would you go about doing that? Uh, yeah. So like, you know, if it's not like just the kind of tone that I can sample, um, you know, I could uh, kind of like, actually, I'll show one method. Maybe I could make like a tiny beat or something and just kind yeah. of like show how like the process goes. Um, but like sometimes, especially with like this kind of stuff, you know, in the past when I made stuff with like the echo rack and stuff, um, you can put stuff in Paul Stretch and like create these like really pretty Paul pads. Stretch. I know yeah, about that stretch. one. Paul yes, I love very cool tool, very fun. Um, but yeah, so you can use that um, to like you can basically turn anything into like a pad with Paul Stretch. Um, you know, or I can like pitch it down and like use pitch map or something. Um, kind of just like give it like a key or whatever, um, yeah. that kind of stuff. So just whatever, like kind of comes to mind when I hear a sound. Um, but you know, it is fun to like sample stuff yeah. as well. But usually if it's like something crazy like this, you know, sometimes I'll just, uh, like kind of, you know, put reverb on it, pitch map it, you know, I'll stretch it. Things like that. Just kind of anything to like give it a key and make it into a pad. Because um, I make a lot of ambient stuff and 
you know, still in my starting place a lot of times. This, this is just a pad. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I but I'll, I'll try to work with it. Grabbing a little piece of something and then taking a look at the spectrum and trying to find a little liquid resonance somewhere. And then yeah. throwing in a really, really sticky band filter or a new band on top of it. Yeah. And let it resonate off that. Yeah, that with a pro cue makes it very easy to do stuff like that. You can just yeah, pull exactly. like notes out and turn anything into like kind of a resonator kind of thing. Alright, I want like a couple more like percussive sounding sounds and then I'm good. Cool. That could be something melodic. That thing is awesome. That was sick. Whoa. Yeah, those are definitely getting used. I got a little, It's so much fun to listen to like a sound generator like this, just go and go and go. Because inevitably there's yeah. going to be like eight or nine really fun moments that you remember. You gotta yeah. like, go back to, scroll back to. It's so nice. Now I'm just going to let it run through some additional. Yeah, give me some new input. I'm curious. Let's let it run a little bit more and then. those like very quick percussion ones. Mm. Are these quiet sounds are very nice? Oh well, that's gonna be nice texture. Yeah god that sounded like cricket <laughs> Going over like the old stuff, but honestly, I'm fine with that. That this is way better. This new stuff. I'm okay with that. God, that like fucking Doppler effect. <laughs> That's so nice. Yeah, I could you, literally do that all day, so I'll stop myself. <laughs> no, that's so real. That's all right. So now we have this long file. Look at that, eight minutes. <laughs> about. Um, Classic. Thank you for watching me do that for eight minutes. Uh, but yeah, so now, you kind of go through the like process of just like finding cool stuff, which uh, might take a minute, but yeah. Okay, I'm gonna save some of those pops. Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, that's nice as well. Some textures. I'm just copying them and kind of moving them onto their own track. So mm -hmm. I can uh, save them for later. That would be kind of neat. 
Just for fun, mm -hmm. Yeah, just with like audio is I think a lot simpler. Yeah. It's very uh, nice to work in. Are we having like four different Edison windows open, copying and pasting clips between them? <laughs> they do have a if you can get like find one of the old versions of the VST version of Edison, you can use it in Ableton still as well. Uh, um, so that's the problem. Because so. there's a lot of nice stuff in uh, Edison. Yeah, but, Edison's. Quite nice. Honestly, the, the main reason I stick with FL Studio is because of... I was gonna say Harmer, but I don't even use Harmer that much anymore. I do really love Citrus. Yeah. I've heard that one's really good. Citrus is good. It's like FM8, but silly. What do y'all know about LMMS? LMMS? <laughs> now that's a, a real sound designer's... Cool. I don't know if I... I think I used... Okay. That was like the first die I ever used back like before I made music. And I was like, oh, I want to like make music. And then I was like, oh, this one's free. I'll try it out. And then I tried it for like an hour and I gave up. And then wow, I that's awesome. started making music like three or four years after that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Someone in chat says, I love you, Thomas. Cammy and I are at a bar. We're hoping to have a great time. Yippee, is that Claire? Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> Let's go. Hello, Claire. That's good. That's a good yeah. noise. And the fun thing is, like, I basically got all these sounds, you know, out of things I could already take and use as sounds. You know, I could take any of these, like, textures and stuff and, like, turn them into drums and stuff. So basically just like, I got all these sounds for free. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. Exactly. That's pretty nice. There's a lot of that like, same texture stuff in it, just cause it's the source material. Oh, that part is so cool. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> sick. Let's put that with the other one. I might have to save just like all of this. Whoa, the little sweep up was really nice. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> Ang very angry. Sure. Oh yeah, that was nice. I'm gonna say that. Um I think I may have... Oh no, I didn't have to Is that that little tiny thing? Yeah, Excellent. I spotted it. There you go. 
I like that. I don't know if I'll use that. I have a bunch that are already like that too, so. Oh wait, and then this texture too. So I'm kind of just organizing them by like, what I'm gonna do with them. On here. Someone said, this is the audio equivalent of babbling incoherently until the voice of God flows through you. Like, literally, exactly. yes. Exactly. It's the easiest way to make good sounds. This is, like, my favorite way to sound design, because I'm basically offloading a lot of the work onto my computer. Like, yeah. you know, when you do a lot of synthesis stuff, like, it's basically, like, you know, that takes a lot longer to get talented at, because you basically have to learn you know, how to make the sound. But this is mm -hmm. more of just like uh, letting the computer make sounds for you and then you just pick out all the good pieces, which I think is a lot more approachable for people who, you know, aren't very experienced with sound design. And it kind of gives you a little peek into like, you know, like how to use, you know, like how to learn new tools and like experiment and stuff. And then you can apply that if you actually want to start learning how to like synthesize from scratch. But, you know, I, I do both, so. Um, you can definitely do that. It's always fun to just like, kind of let the computer do the work for you. Yeah. Uh, it's always really interesting watching people who don't work like this. Because it's, they're like, they're just, like, they just keep building layers and like making these things with like layers on it. And I'm like, well, yeah. no, I just generate, I like get a bunch of raw material and then I carve out a song from it. Yeah, basically. It is kind of like sculpting in a way. Uh, millions, millions, millions. So basically, uh, we've been going over swarm uh, effects. Just the idea of like duplicating an effect a whole bunch of times and just all the parameters for all those instances at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so this started out as like some ASMR -y, like paper bag and like tapping sounds and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, put through a whole bunch of instances of grain delay that were all uh, automated together. And then just, you know, recording it, and so you get a big long file with lots of interesting little moments. <laughs> yeah, before I forget as well, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to save this into my collection. <laughs> there you go. All right, so now that we have all these sounds, um, you can start, like, you know, refining them down further and kind of seeing, like, what can I do with this and how can I start an idea? So, so let me save this um, before I forget. Okay, so um, to start, I'm just going to, like, go down the list, kind of see things. Um, I would like to start with drums because, like, I feel like whenever I start with a melody, I want to put down drums right away. And then if I don't have the drums ready, it's like very frustrating for me. So yeah, yeah I'll start with that. That could be like a melodic thing, sort of. Maybe I put that over here somewhere. I don't want to mess with that yet. That could be like a kind of impact thing, I don't know. It does kind of sound like an impact thing. That's just texture. Texture. More texture. Put that up there. The rest. That's a kick drum if I ever heard it. <laughs> In our, oh wait, I just reversed it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's such that. a good one. That's a good so one. It's like a little mm. anime girl poking you. Oh my god, true. <laughs> Literally cat walking in anime sound. And what I'm doing now, like, if I kind of hear something, but, you know, there's like, I wasn't hearing a lot of, like, percussive stuff afterwards, 
Um, I'm just like pitching it around and then creating these little transients. So like when I'm in, um, or like these like little like warp markers, um, but whenever you're in transients mode in uh, like there's like warping engines, so you can switch between them and they like do different things um, when you pitch the audio files around. Um, but basically when you're on transients mode, it'll like use those as like kind of stop points to like know how to like I don't know preserve them but it can they make things more like like if you just add them in random places you know or like where like, there's like kind like of a transient shit, yeah yeah so now you can hear it's like kind mm -hmm. of hitting on those oh, I gotta get on this Ableton shit for real <laughs> I'm so jealous of the warp modes you have yeah, Fella's it's so like shit at that. So <laughs> I'm gonna make a clap actually out of this. Uh, <laughs> Maybe a little. Is our presenter controlling Ableton? No, I'm. I'm here. I can talk to you through Impact Text Font, like this. Sorry. All right, so this is using Ableton. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, it yeah. is as clear as it looks. Stream is streaming. We are just streaming into a stream with Discord. <laughs> yeah. It's a classic. Yeah. Don't say I don't ever do anything for Goop House. I yeah, host the Discord here. calls. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you, yeah, do you want to ask any questions? Do you have any questions? Do I have any Sorry. questions? I did not mean to do that. That's probably loud. Uh, I have lots of questions. Okay. Go for it. Um, yeah. Just give me a second. I'll get to it. <laughs> they don't have to be about this. Sometimes it's yeah. fun. Oh. You could go like top 100 icebreakers. That, oh, that yeah, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've recently learned a really good like method. Um, mm. when, cause I'm, I'm usually the carrier of conversations when there's like a group of new people at like a function, like I'm the, I'm the glue, right? Okay. Recently. Yeah. Can I hire you to do that for me? Oh, absolutely. I will. <laughs> I will. I'll fly you out. Um, I'm not joking. <laughs> there's, there's a few methods. Usually I just say something like really crazy and that kind of like breaks the tension of like, oh, we have to be polite. Like, I'll just come back from the bathroom and be like, guys, I just dropped a nuclear bomb in there. Like, with people I don't know that well. Wait, um, you're so... This is so oh. real. <laughs> I've seen you do this. Um, but another favorite of mine that I've started to use recently that I learned from someone else is asking, does anyone know any good conversation starters? Because it's um. so absurd. Like, everyone's like, no. <laughs> like, what do you mean? That's a meta. That's meta. So true. And yeah, it, yes, it's meta. meta. It's so meta. It addresses the absurdity of the situation. Um, and it really gets people on board. So smart. So good. Uh, I need I'm to use that one. i that one, yeah. Yeah, I know some, some musicians need... Need advice on how to talk in social settings too. That's the commentary I can provide. The better you get at sound we design. We should do a workshop on that next time. <laughs> True. How to make friends workshop. To people. <laughs> please, 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 please. I'm so serious. I would be so good at that. I feel like I'd be like a really good uh, cult leader, like life coach, if I was in like a listen. Different You're joking, circumstances. but the, the th there have been a lot of things that you have said to me that have unintentionally changed my entire oh life. Oh my god, bio. Because <laughs> I'm like, wait, Shireen is so right about this, hold on. <laughs> that means the world to me, bio. <laughs> it's never anything like you would expect either, it's just little things. I'm like, oh, that's so true. I'm I'm really grateful. My whole life, I do seek to provide like the littlest wisdoms. <laughs> They're the best ones. Yeah, I think by far the best wisdom ever is, um, I learned from my father, who, mm. despite like not really being a music enjoyer, like he doesn't listen to music in his free time, always comes to my shows, 
like since I was a kid, like he took me to all his concerts, uh, mm-hmm. all the concerts I wanted to go to, all my emo bands. Like he obviously doesn't like that music, but he danced way harder than literally anyone there. Like literally oh, yeah. harder than like the biggest fans. And everywhere we go, my dad makes friends, and he's just like, you know, I really adopted that mentality. Like, so I've re- like I used to not really dance at parties. Like, you know, I can work a room, but I never really dance. But then recently, I was like, I'm gonna start dancing. And it turns out, if you do that, you feel really silly, but you're a much better dancer than you would expect to be. Mm-hmm. It's like kind of your brain that holds you back from being a good dancer. Exactly. <laughs> Be the life That's of the party is what I'm hearing. Yes. Well, you don't even have to try that. Just like be yourself. Just like well, do something. I think That's if so you real. be yourself, you kind of are the life of the party True. in a way. Wow. Sometimes what you think of as making a jackass of yourself is actually just profoundly normal. So in the chat says, yes, like literally when you grow up with like shame or nervousness or anything, like you kind of like train yourself into thinking that you are inherently embarrassing, like anything Mm. from opening a spreadsheet in front of someone else to like cooking to like something actually like maybe uh, nerve wracking, like being horny on main, like all of these things <laughs> become like really like shameful and you like live life as if someone's watching you. The second mm. you start realizing like, wait, no one gives a fuck. Like it's literally oh, yeah. fine. Like, yeah. Unlearning that shame is like the key to doing anything good. I think even like making me mu- like, I don't know, like when I, I don't know how to make music, obviously, but like making a you fool of myself. Of, like, people, yes. Literally. Awesome. It's literally so cool. you just do it in front of hundreds of people and you're like wow like all these people are like really good at this and they're not mad at me because i'm not bad like good at this yet you know no you're so right exactly God, i had the the most life-changing experience uh like the last month i went to a club on a disco night when they mm-hmm. were live mixing 80s pop music that's awesome which is already so that's cool. already with awesome vinyl, with fucking vinyl and I sat there, and I was so nervous for, like, 45 minutes, and then I realized that I, and the entire time I had been there, hadn't looked at one person long enough to, like, think about how they were dancing or anything like oh, that. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Whoa. I wonder if that's how it is for everyone. It <laughs> literally it, is. It worked. Yeah, no, it worked. I started dancing, and I had a great time. It was crazy. I think you can even extrapolate that further, and if I mm-hmm. saw someone on the dance floor making a mess, my first thought wouldn't be... <laughs> like they suck my first thought would be holy shit they're having a way better time than i am like where's my play though come on like they must be having so much fun like that would literally be the thought like you wouldn't get like i don't yes exactly that's what it's all about (laughs) holy shit they're going hard as fuck so cool (laughs) Millions and millions and millions said I'm deeply scrutinizing awkward and underconfident people at all time, writing down their mistakes, etc. <laughs> do you want me to die? I'll do it. <laughs> no, t- hate me. You hate me. Social anxiety is greatest ally. <laughs> you're doing all the, ho- the <laughs> heavy lifting. All the hard work. Yeah, no, you're validating all of my biggest fears that I don't think are real. That's so helpful, thank you. Yeah. Anyone know any good conversation starters? That one. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation ender. Um, yeah, my bad. My bad. My. <laughs> yeah, bio. You can't. You can't really I'm use sorry, that one mid conversation. I literally quick ended it, and now it's over, and we can't talk anymore. Yeah, bio. Oh, I think you should actually never talk to anyone ever again. Oh no! <laughs> you can't do this to me. How about the weather? Am I right? That's so true. Someone said Drake definitely killed X. Is that your conversation starter, Bonnie, in the chat? That's crazy. That's a good one. Frogs or rats? Flash, that's a good one. I'm definitely team rats. I'm team frogs. I I love frogs. That's tough because they're both really good. They're both both, like top two creatures. I feel like rats are nice because they're they're mammalian, so it's like way easier to pet than like a rat. 
and, and you know, hug a rat or whatever. <laughs> but like frogs, they're sort of goofy. So like you, you can only hold them and cuddle them in, in a certain. Um, I'm, I've lost words. There's definitely a limited scope of 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 yeah. interaction. Rats are smart and can be your friend. That's true. Also, you, frogs are probably not going to be the most active creature. Like they're going to live in their enclosure. But I think they're adorable. Much. They're so they cute. Are. And awesome. Even um, when they are just sitting there, they're cute. I I have to kind of deal with a lot of rats in my job. I don't have a rat lab, but a lot of my friends work in rat labs. And I'm so grateful I don't. Because if it was my job to slice and dice those creatures up, I would not do it. Yeah. Yeah, you work at um, Starbucks, right? It's crazy yeah. how they have the rat labs back there. <laughs> yeah, man, like when crazy. I started at Starbucks, I thought it was really weird that we had a chamber in the back where we were splicing rat brains, but. You know. It's R and D. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. What can you do? We're testing marketing on them. I hate Mondays. It would work. <laughs> I hate Mondays. <laughs> That's what they have to do. You have to go in early and clean up all the ones that have died overnight. <laughs> Rap fest coming up soon. That's so true. That's true. 2 p.m. tomorrow. PST, I think. Correct? Sneak those little guys home in my pockets. <laughs> no, because That's also... so true. The rat lab rats. So actually a problem in science right now is that we specifically breed rats for use in a lab. So that there's like genetic consistency and stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's also it's becoming a problem sense. because it's like, oh, there's so much genetic consistency. That is a really good sound. That's going to be a base. I'm kind of, oh I'm kind my of god, it so is. I was kind of cooking, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, wait. Let's see what you're Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's tune back into pause. the point of the stream. Well, that's okay. It's like a little podcast. And, <laughs> I don't know. I like it. Well, yeah, no, um, it's given you time to make a lot of little things. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So walk us through it. So I heard this thing and I was like, this would be kind of cool as like a, I don't know, like a melodic thing. But it's kind of atonal. But I think I could work with that, especially if I just focus on drums, you know? And like, I don't know. It is kind of melodic, though. Yeah. But it kind of has like a rhythm to it. So, mm -hmm. I want to work with that and maybe make something kind of dancey. Yeah, it is kind of good. Like music. Yeah. So, I just was like looking around for kicks so I can just put something down and like keep working. I kind of made this one um, earlier, but I don't know if I want to use that as a kick, especially if it's going to be something kind of dancey. Mm -hmm. Maybe something more like. Traditional would be better, so something like that. Or uh, wait, what was it? This one before I did that. Um, I just got a really concerning text from oh. Guppy of Food House. Uh -oh. uh oh. She says, "Just want you to know, I put my whole gussy into this one." What? Did you? Are you getting Guppy whips? Uh. No, this is for the set. Oh, I guess we haven't announced the lineup yet. Oops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Line of leak. 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 <laughs> no. <Shh>. Fuck. <laughs> uh, when should we drop the lineup? I still haven't decided. Yeah, I think we should not drop it. I think we should have. We should drop it somewhere where someone can maybe make a leak. I think that would be true. Fun. True. I was looking at that one. Do you remember when? This is so specific. Do you know Grusha from Pokemon? Yes. Yeah. Do you, Do you remember when Grusha got leaked and it was just a blurry picture of yes. his very feminine face and yes. then he him as the caption? Yes. I think we should reveal the artist like that. I think that would be good. That would be awesome. Dude, I'm so grateful I have a younger brother so I can like still keep up. Like obviously I'm a grown man and I can keep up with Pokemon by my damn self. But it's like so nice to have like a like a you know an excuse to do it so readily. Mm -hmm. I brought bought no, my brother right. like a huge Maro, a Squishmallow. Aww. Like it's so huge, like it's like literally his size. That's so cute. And he loves that thing. 
Let's go. This is also awesome. You know, the sound wave for that kind of looks like an abstract rat. I was, I was thinking gonna that. say it something like very animal. different. Oh, it it is kind of creature filled. It does look like a creature. Have we have we ever talked about the distinction between little guy and creature? Oh, uh, we're doing a little a oh. quick pause. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Um, we can talk about little creatures. My sometimes okay. I look at my cats and I'm like, aw, it's it's my cat. That's a little guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, about sometimes that, I walk into the room. And I'll look at them, and it's like, wow, that's a creature. Yes. That's a little creature. Absolutely. There's something profoundly creature about, like, round shape with, like, a long tail thing sticking out of it, Ooh, like a yes. pointy thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, creature. But you know what I've also experienced? So my my housemates have a cat now, so I regularly hang mm -hmm. out with the cat. So it's not my cat. It's my, it's my housemate's cat, but obviously I'm chilling with the cat all the time. When it's someone else's cat, it's like, oh, that's my, like, that's my bro. Like, that's my bro I crack <laughs> beers with at, like, that's 2 p.m. So on a true. Sunday. You know what I mean? Like, I'll yeah. crack open a beer, I'll sit down on the floor of the house, and I'm like, we're really in it now, Marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, real. so, like, in that <laughs> sense, it transcends, like, little guy. Like, that's my bro. Like, yeah. sometimes a cat can also be that. It's it's definitely like on the other side of the spectrum from me. Yes. It's like person sort of person adjacent. Like my cats are like my shitty coworkers because they come in mm, bother yes. me. Busy. Yes. Yes. Like cool guys. This sounds so far. <laughs> Flash awesome. memories says announcing the leak of the official announcement is so goop house. It is. I was telling um a different Discord server that I was streaming tonight, and the amount of people that were like, it is astounding that Goop House continues to operate. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Listen. <laughs> I I think we're more organized than we've ever have been. Which is saying a lot. That's actually true, and it's still not that organized, which is honestly fine. Like, it means it's a chill vibe. Just a chill hang. It's just a chill hang. Definitely it's a chill, chill, and chill. Regular hang. Just definitely getting a lot more chill hang vibes from this goop week, which I really appreciate. Yeah, the stakes aren't so high. I think that leaking the, the performers then is, is also an extremely low stakes and makes it continue the vibe. Well, that's why I didn't put the performers on the main poster, because I'm like, guys, it's a chill vibe. Like, relax. Yeah. Come to the events if you want to. But don't come here just because you saw a big name you like, okay? Exactly. All right? Like, you're going to come hang out with me and Danny Brown because it's going to be such a chill hang, and we're such chill guys. And we're not even going to do anything. It's just going to be talking, and you better it's, be okay with that. It's just going to be us chit-chatting. We're not even going to talk about music. I'm going to ask Danny Brown how his Baldur's Gate playthrough is going. That's so real. That's so real. God, we should use all this cape that would be so fun. Would that be fun if I made like a slime creature and played through Boulder's Gate? I'm really uh, playing. Get, it can't be just you. Oh. you gotta get three people in. <gasps> True. I'm um, I'm right now. I'm replaying all the Dragon Age games, and uh. you know, like the emotion when you revisit like childhood hyperfixation. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Like, I actually love this game so much that my hands start to go, like, numb if I think about it too hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I have to I play it cool, so. but, like, I start, like, vibrating. Yeah, okay, no, I get oh, that. I get you. That's like when I watch the Pokemon movies. Yeah. And, and towards the climax, I start, like, gasping and crying. Yes! I'm like, I gotta be cool, I gotta chill. Please. Lock in, lock in. Yeah, I need to relax. Someone says, and I don't know what this means, can you put this into a regular sampler instead of a s simpler because I'm curious what it sounds like with interpolation off when you play it really low. What does that mean? Put it into a sampler? I don't instead really use sampler. sampler. Might be putting me on. Here, let me the method. get a new track. Okay, here. Put this here. And you said put the interpolation really low? 
or interpolation, interpolation off. off. I trust Drea. She's a smart cookie. I don't know where that is. Good. Question. Oh wait, right here, right here. No interpolation. Okay. Like, let's see. <gasps> Honestly, wait. That might just be like a good, uh, like alternate base. Like not as the main base, but like you know one that comes in. Yeah, like a fill well. base. I get you. This sounds like a Stardew Valley sound effect. UI noise. Yeah. Wait, what was that? I uh, I don't know. Do you just have to pitch it down a whole bunch to get the sound that way? Like a little bit. Little bit. It does sound aliasy. That's for sure. I kind of like the high pitch noise. Yeah, the aliasing. Huh. Man, maybe I should use sampler more for sampling. You just put me on. I just learned something. Thank you. I did well, not realize like this is so good. Like compared to warp modes. I mean it's fun to mess with the in a um simpler. But yeah. Very neat. Guys, this is what music's all about. Exactly. Yeah, Cultural exchange. All right, I'm gonna stop messing around with bases so then I can like, you know, make drum. this a thing. <laughs> drum time, drum time. Okay, that's God, definitely that gonna be so used. nice. Yeah, make a little wink noise. Kind of like that. It's very simple. Uh, you didn't have to do all that to make that sound, but in the spirit of things, I did. Awesome. It's awesome. It is. No, the best drums nice come thing. out of just like silly piles of noise. Exactly. Very full spectrum. All right, I'm going to side chain. What? Very important. It's a classic. Actually, I'm going to do the special side chain. What? Guys, we who wants to start sidechain discourse right now? Um, Anyone interested? I am interested. <laughs> I'm scared of sidechain discourse. I think if you use sidechain, <laughs> you're gay and stupid. You and see, this is actually music. This is that's my opinion, Jen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Flash, Jen. I think that if you're using sidechain, you 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 could be you could be not using it. Um, okay. Unless you're using it in a really stylistic way, where it's like obvious that it's there. I think that. That's cool. I think that using it in a really subtle way does not appeal to me at all. Can I be honest with you all? I've been in the Before. industry for four years. Are you gonna I tell me you don't have know? No idea is. what a side <laughs> chain is. So it's. Um, I'm always you know giving how... people shit for using it or not using it, but I have no idea. Like I literally don't know. You, you Wait, know Daft Punk, right? right I know Daft. Yeah. I know a few songs by Daft Punk. You know how when the the kick drum is playing. And the song goes like, it was like ducking on the kick. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Like volume like go sort down. Of sound. Yeah, volume go down when the kick hits. I That's see. side chaining. And I technically, see. it's more complicated than that because you can side chain anything. You can mm -hmm. take the signal from uh, one sound source and then convert it into control signal for like a filter or mm -hmm. like the frequency of a. a, a the delay time or you know whatever I see. Anything. it's just really common to use it for volume because if your kick and your bass play at the same time they can interfere with each other destructively so mm -hmm. it's good to side chain your bass to your kick so they don't interfere with each other i see yeah. i understand wow this i'm learning something so new nice, every though. day this is so fat i know I got this feeling on that summer day when music. you were born. I'm so bad at doing uh, tops for, for uh, house music. I'll do one of those. Although, we should it. find a hat. So, I like doing this a lot. Like, when I do this kind of stuff, is like, I'm like, okay, I need something new. Instead of, like, going and looking for it in my drum kit folder, 
I'll just like look around and yeah. see what I can make. Ooh, I like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So let's turn this back on. Let's see what we have around here. That'll be used for something. Jesus, there is so much I do not know. <laughs> what we don't know could fill an ocean, but that's to no, make yeah, you genuinely. excited. Exactly. That makes me happy. I'm like I yes, think that so you read fun. it in the wrong tone. I think it's Jesus. There's so much that I don't <laughs> oh, wow. know. Wow, there's <laughs> so much I don't know. <laughs> yes, maybe reframe that as wow. There's so much in the world to learn, and there's beauty yeah. everywhere. Wow. <laughs> So nice. I love that sound a lot. <laughs> the spectrally. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of um. I forget what it's called. Uh, give me a sec. That's gonna be a hat, I think. We'll just pitch it up. Hold on. Oops. Whatever. It, I'm not going to say it by name anyway, even if I did know what it was called. But a funny VST made by a very problematic person Whoa. that I really love the sound of. And I have a bunch of samples from it that I've saved to use for things, but I have I to see, ask see. them a lot. <laughs> um, you know what someone said to me, an IRL said to me the other day? Uh, an what? IRL that I've met while regularing uh, this particular bar for Trivia Night. Right, mm -hmm. so this person does not know me in any context other than Trivia Night. And they said, your streams are really good. I just wish you would do the anime voice less often. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I don't really know about you, but that really hurt. That's crazy. <laughs> Should get into voice acting. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. It's... <laughs> The most transgender career. Everyone says computer science, but that's not even true. It's no. I I wish I was like Matt Mercer, if I'm being honest. You are kind of like Matt Mercer. In what sense? <laughs> uh, I don't know. He's just like a chill hanger. He's like a big fan of drag. True. You know? Has a nice sounding voice. He has a Another beautiful sounding thing. voice. Yeah. You want to know something really wild? This is maybe a little bit weird, but uh -huh. um, I started voice training like a month ago, uh -huh. and they asked me to bring clips of voices I liked um, uh -huh. to show people, and to show my instructors specifically so they could give me feedback. And I did bring a clip of your voice because I was like, wow, Shreen has such a nice voice. Really? That's yeah. so... <laughs> I hope that's not embarrassing. No, that's a really cute. I mean, I think what's really funny is that um, about... Three years ago, I tried to make my voice deeper. Um, not like in a voice trainy way, just in like a, I decided, you know what? I wish I had a deeper voice. And yeah. oh my God, every single thing I say, say on video from that era of my life is absolutely intolerable. Like what you, no. like it's so no, bad. So and it's like, I was just like 17, so I can't feel like that bad at mm -hmm. myself. Like, I get it. But like, at the same yeah. time, it was like, I literally sounded like all those guys that like try to force a vocal fry. Like, I sounded <laughs> like Corpse Husband. Like, <laughs> you think you're the best growler on, on TikTok? <laughs> but bio, <laughs> you know, I just like so distinctly remember, like, I don't know if the, you're cognizant of this. But literally, one time I called you, and then I was like, holy shit, your voice is completely different. In, like, a really what? good way. I, like, I remember telling I was like, holy shit, Bio, like, your voice sounds fucking awesome. Like, it probably oh, was that. gradual progress from your perspective, but from my perspective, it was literally like, oh my god. <laughs> it was awesome. When was this? Are you sure? I literally started voice training, like... Four weeks ago. No, this was definitely before you started voice training. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I maybe I didn't tell you directly. I definitely told someone else. I was like, "Bio sounds 
fucking great. Like, that's amazing. That's crazy. I feel like I tend to, I have a voice, like, I call it my closed voice. Mm -hmm. It's the one that my parents, you know, put me into practice with Mm -hmm. because I have a hard time controlling the tone of my voice. Mm -hmm. And so it's, like, my default when I don't know someone. But Mm -hmm. when I get to know people better, I tend to talk with, like, a much higher pitch and, like, a huge variation in pitch as well. Yeah. Maybe that. I don't know. Maybe. I just remember it being so distinct. That's wild. (laughs) I think, honestly, I used to, like, not like my voice that much, but streaming, Mm -hmm. because I hear my own voice back so often, you, like, lose that dissonance that you get with your own voice. It's like, oh, that's just an awesome voice. I get that. No, as part of voice training, I've been asked to record myself talking a lot and listen Mm -hmm. to the things about it and and really dig into what I like and don't like about my voice so that I can figure out how to fix it. And it's such a weird, it's like looking at a picture of yourself before you dyed your hair or something Yeah, like that. no, it's very 100%. It's outside of yourself, it's very strange. Bio, what's it like being blonde, by the way? Because you kind of went blonde I, as I left being blonde for good. It's fucking awesome. Everyone was like, everyone always says that blondes have more fun. And I fucking bleached my hair and immediately had way more fun. So I think it's true. It's so crazy, like, how instantaneous it is. I remember so so seriously the first day I went blonde and I was like, holy shit, this is the first day of the rest of my life. No, I I do not think I will ever be able to go dark hair mode again. It's kind of absurd how differently people treat me. It looks great on you. It really does suit you. Yeah, I mean, you should always be careful with bleaching your hair, but I also think that it's something you can learn after a while. I, that's kind of the hope. I have some friends who are pretty good at it. Yeah. Um, hoping to learn from them, to be honest. The Shireen Bio old school MMO stream was so fun. The what? What stream is that? Did we stream oh. an MMO? I don't. Did we stream an, I don't think we streamed an MMO. I think we just had a conversation about old MMOs we liked. Oh. Because I probably talked your ear off about Lego Universe because that fucking game. Was really <laughs> bad. Maybe. That sounds like you. Oh, we're talking about boy versus girl coded so MMO. I do remember that. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, oh yeah, yeah it's all, all right. coming back to me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. What happened? I I don't want it to crash, but it might. Oh no. Okay. Oh. All hands on deck. So cool too. Yeah, God. Here, I'm sending my energy. Everyone pray in the chat. Everyone start praying in the chat. Everyone say, I still believe. I. I, I do believe in Ableton, I do. <laughs> I do believe in Ableton. Ableton, if you can hear us. Ableton, if you can hear us. Please, Ableton. Please, Ableton. <laughs> Ableton, please save me. Ableton, if you Ableton. can hear us, save us. Save us, save Ableton. Us. Save us, Ableton. <laughs> okay, this is bad. This is not good, guys. Oh, yeah, this, this is still looking, looking. This sounds good, though. It sounds awesome. Here, I'll just record my audio. Yeah, just start recording. Well, it, it'll it'll save it. It'll save it. Don't worry. We will save. Ableton I acting like FL this. right now. I might just close it and let it auto save it. Okay. That's right. honestly fair. This is Chat. this is the real sound designer experience right here. Live no, that's so real. Everyone look Especially at my swarm stuff. Look at my yes. dinosaur in the meantime. Thank you so break. Whoa! Thank you It's one of those you can put into water and gets all big, but I haven't done it yet. It's already pretty big. It's awesome. Really Whoa. Um, here's my Bakugan. Yeah. <laughs> I call it my Mikugan. Oh yeah. I have lots I of Bakugans. That. Whoa. Here's my. I used to love those when I was a kid. Me too. Me too. Here's one of my calico critters. 
It's a little bedtime wow. kitty. Um, I have uh-huh. a I have a bowl of creatures, by the way. I don't know if that's chat so awesome. knows this about me, but I keep all my creatures in a bowl on my desk. So if I want to fidget with one of them, I can. Um, here's a frog oh that Cody gave to me. Can you say it looks like me? Um, here's another calico critter. He's naked right now because I didn't. I took his clothes Whoa. to give him to some other. Calico. Scandalous. But he's such a cute little lamb. <gasps> but this is my favorite calico critter. It's this baby bunny. Oh my god, look at him. Oh Aww. my god. <laughs> That's just too cute. What else is in here? Oh, of course, I have a Sony Angel. I've never purchased a Sony Angel in my life, but I ordered this tank top off Depop, and they sent me this by accident. Um, <laughs> they mixed up two of the orders so that I got the That's tank awesome. top and a free Sony Angel, but it's Let's go. Mr. fucking Jellybean Head. Um, Box of Doritos says, when producing, do you ever find yourself at the risk of hearing a clip so frequently that you lose the plot? If so, what do you do? Um, I'd say the best thing to do when you start like, you know, getting that ear fatigue or like not even ear fatigue, mm-hmm. but like kind of idea fatigue. Well, I mean, yeah, you, you can take a break, but if you want to keep like while I'm working, I pitch things up and down like a million times. And I think that kind of helps. It like That's rewires so true, your brain. So I'll end up pitching things up or up and down, like, you know, a bunch of times while I'm working. So then I just don't like, you know, lose ideas while i'm working i don't know it just seems to help i'd also say like don't be afraid of going back a few steps like um drawing in like ms Mm. paint with no layers and like no way to save individual layers made me realize that sometimes you'll get really fixated on like a detail and like lose the plot but like it's (laughs) fine to just like erase shit and like go back like don't be afraid of like losing progress um it's better to like get closer to the idea that you want than to try to fix something that is not working saved yes yay Yay. yeah some cost fallacy is a bitch let's go it's true everyone look at bio's beautiful blonde hair by the way while we're here hello let's go (laughs) wow wow oh wow really no (laughs) (laughs) i can't believe it Okay. Oh, good. All right. There's the hat. And if you want a tip on making hats, like open hats and stuff, mm-hmm. like honestly, you can take most sounds and then just high pass them, like until you're in this range. And if I it's see. like kind of noisy, you know, you get a hat sound. It's the cheat code. That's a pretty strong cheat code. Yeah. Then, like, if you you can make a bunch of cool hats as well because like you know if it's a little different sounding sample and you do it it will sound different yes yeah. i saw a video where someone high passed a square to make it an 808 type open hat and it works shockingly well says evie in the chat yes, exactly i had a i made a patch the other day it was just like um i was like a tone and then i just added the, a delay to it like that was really fast and it kind of made like like that kind of open hat sound wow so, yeah hats are very fun to make i've been like really kind of experimenting with them because i in the past i haven't really done much with the like open hats and stuff just tie hats but yeah very fun all right where should we go from here That kind of sounds like a dog bark there for a sec. Like an evil dog. <laughs> evil dog, wait. Arf, arf. <laughs> arf, arf. Uh, how do you feel about streaming for like 15 more minutes? Does that sound good? Yeah, that's fine with me. I could. Okay. 
quickly wrap up this idea. We can hit like a two hour mark. I feel like that'd be good. I'm down for that. It's the um, dog from Undertale. Yes, thank you. That's what I was thinking of. If anybody Whoa. has any questions or anything. Yeah, yeah. please. Please yeah, ask questions. questions if we're only going for 15 more. I mean, we can go longer. I might just have to transfer the stream over to you, Bio. Okay. I don't know. It might be chill. Hold on. <laughs> I just left the other group. I was like, this sounds way fuller than it used to. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm very bad at like kind of coming up with things on the spot. I think when I make Music, I usually take like hours and hours. So, no, that's I'm doing my best. You're doing great. I don't even make music on calls anymore. I can't. But who's on calls anymore in today's society? I, you have no idea. I have the Discord and Twitter addictions are back in a real way. Really? Are we back? I am. I'm back in the fucking building. Can I tell you? I literally. I used to log on to my Discord calls like a nine to five. Oh L yeah, absolutely. Like, no, literally I was clocking in. Like Twelve hours yesterday. Oh my god. <laughs> that a long day. No, I found out you could use Twitter and Discord to flirt with women. Um, oh yeah. You can also get flirted with, and so it's just like that's all I want to do now. I'm I'm on that I've I've definitely ventured down that dark path. Well, be, it's a beautiful dark path. path. It's a beautiful a path. Time. It can lead to de uh, places, but I've been there. I'm, I'm losing the plot very rapidly. It's okay. It's very simple, but it's very grooving. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it just like to see you. Yeah, I was going to say, I would love to see the bass get incorporated here. I feel like that would really take it home. Not going to lie, I'm going to make just the regular sub bass. Oh, don't sue me. No, I don't believe you. But I will incorporate the other one, too. But honestly, sub I bass. A lot of basses. Um, I just use regular stuff. Bio, can no, you continue fair. this joke? Sub bass. Uh. Uh. uh sub bass. Uh. Uh. <laughs> uh um, <laughs> sub, sub, sub bass. This this bass is a what? <laughs> when Kat and I were playing Fortnite. Oh god, we should play Fortnite on stream again. That would be fun. I'm so fucking bad at it. I'm getting carried by them. Yeah. Of the time. I just zoomed in on Bio's face by accident instead of on oh. stream. <laughs> That in. Someone oh, says, sorry. Why did the second one go? <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, someone says, This is so late, but sub sandwich base. That's really good. True. I like that, that is, one. No, I think it's a good video. That's a good. Uh, wow. Oh, wait. Can I, can I come clean real quick? Yeah, yeah. This whole time I've had that song that's like, if you want to get with me, there's some things you gotta know. 
I like my beats fast and my bass down low. That's been stuck in my head this entire time we've been streaming. That's so fair. I think I've heard that one. It's a good one. I feel like they probably played that. Dude, we should do a hyper pop prom. Oh, restream. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm surprised that hasn't happened yet. No, Discord's new audio uh, capture is really busted. I don't know what they did to it. That's good. I I think there was like a year or so where I didn't have that issue at all. Yeah. Like before I had had it, and then it came back, and now it's I... like kind of on and off. Literally never had any issues with screen share or audio share, and then literally in the last year, one update they made this broken and everything. Someone said I've been imagining Fraxian vocals on this. Fraxian would eat this the fuck up. It's always rules. Like it's always really good. Oh, it whips ass. I there's one called Can't Go Back Home Again, baby, from fucking uh what's that game called? Oh, shit. Ragnarok Online. It is one of the songs of all time. It's so good. Um, I'm, I'm about to start bullying our own viewers. Don't start discourse in my Twitch chat. Stop, stop, stop. Oh my god. Before you start discourse in my Twitch chat, just know I have a PhD. And I almost <laughs> went to law school. Well, I don't have a PhD yet. But watch your mouth. You're, get, you're getting there, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, before you start discourse in my chat, just know I'm a grad student. Just so. know I'm a grad student. I have nothing to lose. So I'll just make a little groove here. Sorry if I've been talking a lot. Uh, I hope at least the, the I don't know. <laughs> no, you explaining. you're in the zone. And you did a great job explaining everything. Yeah. Nope. Oh, just gotta watch the process. Yeah. Oops. If you have any sound design questions, please leave them in the yes. chat. Literally about anything also, like it doesn't have to be about like anything I talked about. You know. Someone asked, how can I make some kitty cat noises? That's simple. You just um, you just shake your head really hard and then you go, meow, meow. That's so Hope true. that helps. Um, uh, slow filters. sine wave. Yeah. yeah. Sine wave with portamento or like glide on. Yep. That's the sauce. Someone uh, says, do you work with additive synthesis at all? I can't wrap my head uh, around it. Sometimes I think yeah, it's like very well. Wait, that is a uh, operator? Really simple. I think operator yeah. is additive. So like occasionally, like if I want a bell sound, but like uh -huh. honestly, I should work with operator more just like for explorative sound design, just because like with automation and stuff, you can or like modulation, you can get some really cool sounds. But uh, not a ton. But I would like to more. Just because the real I think thing it's is. Neat. 
additive is super simple because you're literally just it's just a big pile of sine waves. Yeah. There's like a million different implementations of it that let you do different things. Like Agent Cook uses Razor all the fucking time, which is yeah. Um, uh, God, what is I that? actually got what that recently. It's the contact. Um, yeah, thing, or right? reactor. reactor. Yeah, reactor. Yeah. Okay. It's so cool. It's a lot like armor, um, but like more fucked up. You can do some cool stuff, but the whole idea is that you give it a sound and then it sort of synthesizes it as a bunch of sine waves. It's cool. Um, how the part do I make things not sound boring and plain? Like, all my stuff sounds too much like unseasoned chicken. Um, I think a lot of that goes into, like, mixing. And, like, you know, you can have great ideas, but if you don't know how to mix them, it's not going to really pop like you want it to. And, like, you know, if you can mix things well, even, like, simple stuff will sound really full and just interesting and unique. Well, not unique, but, like, you can make it sound unique, basically, with mixing. Um, but I guess, like, kind of honing in on that and, like, you know, listening to other people's stuff and, like, analyzing it. So, you know, if you really like the mix of a song, like, go in and, like, look at the spectrum of the song as it's playing and kind of see, like, you know, how are the, how is this, like, spectrum shape? So, like, if I get this spectrum out and look at it, kind of see, like, you know, how this is shaped. And, like, you know, if you have a song you like, you can kind of try to emulate that with the elements, you know, mm -hmm. trying to add similar elements that they do. So if they have, like, you know, there's just, like, a bass and drums, you know, and, like, a pad, you can kind of take that and uh, use that as well. I mean, maybe it's not, like, the exact same sounds or anything. But, like, you know, kind of use that to build your own thing around and see, you know, how does this work? How can I kind of emulate that? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, build from there. But, yeah, just, like, learning how to mix and, like, use compressors and EQ and stuff will make your stuff kind of sound more full of life. And, like, I don't know. That's, um, I guess, the best way I could explain it. Oh, yeah. But maybe that's not your problem. But I, I mean, in, in the same way that... Um using references is the quickest way to get good at drawing using references mm -hmm. is a really really good way to get um get better at making music whether that's sound design or like writing mm -hmm. having reference tracks there is going to be a huge help because it's just easier to write from something that you're hearing or looking at than it is to yeah. just make stuff up on the spot exactly uh, i also designs, if anyone has formal experience with auto production audio production school um i don't. I studied computer science and I did some music technology classes, but not music production. Yeah, I'm. I graduated with a computer science degree. I didn't. I didn't know that. Wow. Stuff at all. Wow. Yes. I was Hashtag also gonna. I was also gonna add. <laughs> hey guys, non musician here, about to give you <laughs> fucking the world's most unsolicited advice. I also think it's worth examining why you think your music sounds boring like do you really think it's boring because it's uninteresting does it not sound unique do you have like a specific vision in your head for what you want your music to sound like and it's just not getting there like i think uh those are all questions worth examining because then you will find a clear route forward um as to what to change I also think, in general, that people who are successful at being creative and doing creative things don't, they don't just like things, they understand why they like things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I love this Very song. True. I'm going to think about what parts of this song I really love and, and yeah. apply that to my own things. Absolutely. Exactly. It's a very like, honestly though, it's also like, even if you don't make art or anything and you just like something, finding out why you like it and then you can find more things you like through that is totally. like i don't know that'll just like improve your life <laughs> it, like Absolutely. finding out why you like things it's like, media literacy you know. really it's just like it is you can yeah. just exactly. consume what you're what you're like or you can like understand what you like yeah i don't know it's also good to be able to articulate like why you like something you know mm -hmm. it gives you a better mm -hmm. like view of yourself and like who you are I mean, not to say like, oh, you should, you know, base your entire personality is what you consume, but like, sort of, 
a little it's bit. It's good to know why you would, are the way you are, and a lot of yeah. that is informed by what you consume, even if that isn't all of it. Exactly. I totally get that. Plus, like, then you're better at conversing with other people when they talk about the things they're interested in, mm-hmm. and you don't deflect against yeah. differing opinions because they're just yeah. as valid most of the time. Not true. Um, is music theory worth learning? Like, how many of y'all would say it has helped? I, I I used to be a big theory buff, and I like it a lot. I do think music theory is really helpful if you want to get good at writing stuff really fast. Um, yeah. You can kind of just draw from examples that you remember. But it is, can be a bit of a box sometimes, which is why I don't... I like to make my melodies happen to me by accident most of the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... Uh... I don't really have much experience with theory like traditionally mm-hmm. like I kind of like have learned a lot just from like 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 Instagram reels or right? and oh, like so I don't know just like random stuff you know that I've seen around or videos I've watched or like what friends have told me but uh not like gone and learned much by myself but I would say it's useful like it definitely helps like you know to kind of understand the relationship between notes I don't know. It's I think way more it's helpful to have fun. But... Descriptively than prescriptively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as well. exactly. Like one of the things that I do pretty frequently is I will try and figure out uh, like what intervals are used in the chords in a song. Yeah, like, yeah, stuff yeah. Like that because it's really it's much more useful to have a reference track that you can you understand what's going on in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, intervals are super helpful. <laughs> whatever whatever gets you excited to make music honestly if learning all the intricacies of music theory gets you pumped then that's an entryway if it freaks you out you can always learn it secondarily yeah. or just not learn it and or not learn it pay, and trust your ears because like oh, it is really a very personal thing yeah. Also, don't fucking listen to these music YouTubers. Yeah. They all, no one, no one. It is impossible to learn how to write music in your own way from someone who's writing music in their way. That's a real fact. Exactly. That's you so can true. learn little bits, but you can't learn the whole thing. It's yeah. A huge time sink sometimes. It can be. Someone says, "How much sampling is too much sampling?" No, there's no answer. What do you mean? Everything yeah. is a sample, even if you made Just, it. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Nobody can stop you. Drop that uncleared s- uh, sample in that song. Was, exactly. Who's going to stop you? Think about the songs you? you like. Think about what, they, what they're what they sampling and, and how much of it is sampled and how much of it is, is synthesized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't but, use Splice. I abuse it. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Whatever gets the job done, you know? If you are yeah. happy with it and you're having fun, you know, do that. Like... I'm not going to stop you. I don't think anybody will stop you or should stop I you. I might. For that matter. No, no. I might well, come yeah, freaking might, get if you. If we get copyright strike, <laughs> might be bad. I might. You know, I was going to sign up for the uh, Twitch DJ thing, but then if mm. you sign up for that, then you're not allowed to save clips. Yo. What? Isn't that really? such like a double-edged sword? I like love my clips on my channel. It's so lame. Great. I mean, I guess it makes That's sense fun. if there's like you know copyrightable music but it's not a dj stream like yeah why does it matter <laughs> um yeah. that's silly someone says has anyone run into legal trouble before regarding music i mean gwyneth paltrow tried to sue me for about two years for my copyright are you on, for real on well, yeah on my trademark of goop week but uh i resolved that by not paying the 500 dollars to continue the <laughs> copyright let's go so she might you she might pop out with an event called goop week soon that's crazy. I got, I remember the whole reason you got the trademark too was so that we could squash an NFT event. Yes, literally, so we could squash some nobody's NFT event where they were calling it Goop Week. Like I just wanted to really own fire. this asshole, and we did. It was that's awesome. So fire. Like that's the only reason I got the trademark. Like I I don't uh morally care about uh copywriting stuff i just want to ruin some losers day <laughs> it was awesome it was awesome let's go twitch 
DJ program doesn't let you play unreleased music. That's crazy. It really Wait, feels can't... like they didn't talk what? to musicians who stream on Twitch before At all. putting I the mean, rules like together. I mean, like most things, music copyright is like the worst thing on earth. It is so constricting. You kind of just have to break the rules or you don't get to have any fun. All right. I have to go. Um, yes. Do you guys want right, to... We can close the stream out or we can pass the stream off up to you i mean i'm kind of just waffling at this point but okay i mean that's fair let's i guess we can like last couple like last question yeah let's see anybody yeah, else let's has anything pertinent and then uh, uh yeah and if anybody else has questions after this like you know feel free to just like dm me or you know reach out yeah let me yeah you want to drop your socials in the chat yeah sure plug your Here. plug your plug your life Oh. Both of you. You can follow me on Twitter. Wait, should I post the link or just my like? Yeah, post the link. Oh, okay, okay. It I might actually my block off. you from posting links, so I'm going to post oh. them. Well, we'll see. I We're almost We're just chilling. deleted my entire Streamlabs like <laughs> setup. <laughs> I just want no, you guys you to know. I just want everyone up. to know that I somehow managed to almost accidentally delete everything I had saved in Streamlabs. I have no idea how I managed that. I just got a pop up that was like, "Are you sure you want to delete all your pre saves?" That would suck. That would be really like the screen would literally go black if that happened. <laughs> if you wouldn't hear what I was saying. Stream over. <laughs> Stream over. Crazy. Um. Yes. Again. Uh, another reminder for those of you who joined later, all the donation money is going to the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. Um, we will be taking donations throughout the week, and you can definitely donate offline by going to the same link when you hit exclamation point donate. I will be reading all the donations out uh, at the start of the next stream mm -hmm. if you donate offline. Um, I appreciate everyone who's donated. I appreciate everyone who came today. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming on. This is so fun. Yes. It was really Thank fun. Thank you for inviting me. I had a lot of fun. And like it's always fun to like explain the things I do. Yeah. So. yeah. Thank you for that. Well, any final remarks from anyone? Yeah, we have one more question. Someone Oh yeah. Someone, please. Uh somebody said, so can you say something about breaking out of the loop? Um I think mm. literally just have fun and do something you wouldn't do normally is how you break out of the loop and like kind of i don't know just like do something you wouldn't do and that's yeah. you already broke out of the loop there like True. you know have fun be like explorative and go you know. play exactly don't write loops go be silly, uh, go be silly. So true. um and i would say just try something new. If you release music in Goop House, that shit's not on your record. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. easy to mess with and try something new and try something ridiculous. And so seek out avenues in which you are safe to do that and be playful and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, great. We're going to close out the stream now. Thank you guys so much for coming. We will see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. PST for Rat Fest. Um, the VOD for this will be up later today or tomorrow. Thank you, Flash Memories. And Let's go. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, chat. Woohoo. Wow. Hang on, they can still hear us. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't play any copyrighted music. Quick, 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 quick.